Thank, thanks, Harry. Uh, and we're now so that first that first case study, if you like, was connected with teacher associations uh, reconceptualizing what they can do. The next one is looking at relationship possible relationships that teacher associations might have with teacher education. And I'm very happy to introduce uh, Dr. Erica Kembe from who's a coordinator of Kamelta Research Group and also works in the Department of English at the Higher Teacher Training College in Yaoundé in Cameroon, whose title is Using Teacher Expertise to Inform Teacher Education. Uh, hopefully, Eric is there. I'm right there, Martin. And fantastic, Eric. So if you'd like to go ahead, go ahead with, 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 with your presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share my experience um, working with Carmelta Research Group for a very long time. Um, without wasting much time, I'll go straight to sharing my screen and some of the things that we see on the screen, I'll be talking and explaining them. Okay. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. Excellent. Um, yes, like, we can see. Great. Like Martin said, um, I work in the main college of education in Cameroon, at the Economa Superior de Yaoundé. And at the same time, I'm coordinator of Cameroon Research Group and the average coordinator of IELTFL Research Special Interest Group. And what, what, what I'm sharing here, um, contrary to Amira's perspective is an, an account of an unstructured uh, enterprise, uh, things that happened organically with the intention of dealing with emerging issues. And so we, uh, I'm going to share exactly what we did and, and at a certain point, our knowledge, uh, my experience. So in part one, I'll talk about um, teacher education. At a certain point, I may generalize, but specifically I should be talking about what obtains in my context. And I'll also talk about teacher associations within my context and then I'll look at it, what is it that is the case here that we have to uh, be dealing with. And in part two, I'll talk about our initiative, what we did and try to make some statements, acknowledging the initiative. And then we will conclude with a few scenarios. So um, here we want to have a brief um, reflection on what teacher, educators do, um, the conceptualized knowledge about teaching, conceptualized in more open and generalized ways. And that's what obtains here in Cameroon. And they enhance trainees' knowledge about teaching theories and methodologies, irrespective of the constraints of the context or how applicable these are to the existing context. And overall, the foreground trainers' knowledge and build teacher, teacher, teachers build based on craft models. What I mean by craft model is performing a demo and telling students what has to be done in a classroom. And students take that as, as a model they can use in any classroom. And um, they, tr they train present and not future teachers. Um, they, they train teachers who are going to teach in the context, they have an idea, only an awareness on. And they create opportunities for the acquisition of skills and competencies in teaching. And this to me is some kind of generalized knowledge. And they operationalize, sorry, well, this is now, this is what teachers associations do, uh, sorry, teacher educators do. It's good for us to look at what teacher associations do. And because before we get there, I want to say that teacher educators or teacher education institutions operate as an entity, systematic entity with norms, values, and these norms they believe have to be transferred and if not transmitted to the teachers they are training, the pre-service teachers they are training in the hope that these will be uh, passed on to the learners they'll be teaching uh, in the classrooms. Now let's look at what teacher associations do. Like I said a while ago, teacher, te teacher educators conceptualize knowledge about teaching. 
But teacher, teacher associations operationalize knowledge about teaching. That is, they work within the realms of the circumstances in which they find themselves. And they sort out concerns in teaching, enhance professional confidence, give opportunities for teachers to reinvent their identities. You can see this from Amira's project, and this can only happen more in teacher associations. And they create occasions for reflective practices and develop local expertise. Um, we'll have time to see how uh, the members of the Carmelita Research could develop local expertise without necessarily depending on what they obtained in training institutions. And in teacher associations, the, the, the interest is to focus more on what is practically realistic in each of the context whether or not this, uh, this was inherited from a teacher education institution, the idea is to find out if it is necessary or relevant. Okay, so what then is the case here? We have seen teacher educations as separate ins as an institution. We have seen teacher, teacher associations as another institution. And most often in our context here, they work on, on parallel, they work on parallel lanes and in, in hierarchical structures that do not allow possibilities for them to come together to make them. again, these are structures which need which deadly need one another. So teacher educators generally feel superior to practitioners. And because they think that they train the practitioners, and so they own the knowledge which the practitioners have, and so um, are better than the practitioners in every respect. And the possibilities for teacher educators and practitioners to interact are reduced by these hierarchies of structures. If teacher education is to have relevance, You are muted. We don't hear anything. Sorry, Eric, we, we, can't, we can't hear you. I'm off. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes, okay, great, thank you. Okay, so I said a while, I said a while ago that teacher, teacher education exists as a system, separate system with hierarchical structures and teacher associations also exist as their own system, but more focused on what operates within the context in which they function. Now, if you look at this uh, sketch here, you realize that teacher education, the relationship between teacher education and teacher association is monodirectional. Teacher educators train teachers and send them into the practitioner phase here, and teacher associations fish their participants from this practitioner phase and overhaul this practitioner or possibly reinvent them in ways that are realistic. Now, let me share what we have been doing in Carmelita Research Group. And I'd, I'd like to say that what we were doing in Carmelita Research Group started by building local expertise. And at a certain point, we gained recognition from the College of Education, and we had to find a bridge, a way of working together. You can find teachers here, um, they brainstormed on their classroom challenges and their planning lessons together with pre-service teachers in a ways that um, um, give pre-service teachers a poor taste of what they find in the classroom. And this is one of the ways through which the Carmelita Research Group builds local expertise. You find this teacher here sharing um, a classroom lesson, they taught a successful classroom lesson. This, these three teachers here, this is exactly what we do in, in Carmelta. Now, because of the recognition we've gained, we kind of blend our uh, ideas and uh, the things that we do with the College of Education. And in some of these things, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, thanks. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. If you find here at the center, you find the my head of department here again. Um, you find the then Carmelta, the former Carmelta national president, Catherine Moto, 
who and then the, the lady in red then was the secretary general of Carmeta, who is now the um, Carmeta national president. And you'll find here um, a teacher educator. This way you find national pedagogic inspectors of English language. And now they are sitting on the panel and, and listening to presentation. And after that, they have a panel discussion. Now, if you look at some of the themes that we um, developed for our conferences, the intention is to target this relationship, ways of building this relationship. And one of the ways, like Martin said, as categorization of the centering, is how we engage different communities. You find here a work extended to Peace Corps Cameroon. And we had Peace Corps uh, volunteers teaching in Cameroon who participated in Carmeta Research Group events. Now, right down here, you find a novice teacher sharing an account of the relationship between the training they got from the pre-service school and what she found on the field. So this is the way through which we establish connection with teachers. And part of the outcomes of the expertise were built here is you find this young man here demonstrating how to prepare a local recipe. That is the way through which we have operationalized teaching so that learning is no longer seen as transmission of knowledge, but in ways that, but handled in a way that uh, impact the learners themselves, uh, develop the learners' competences. You can find things that learners do, and this is because of the expertise that we have developed in a commercial research group. If you look at the panel in the posters, some of our posters, this is just uh, some of the things that we do, the people we, we invite into our, to our conferences. You look, it's a diverse audience. It's um, a, a blend of different systems, education stakeholders that we bring together, hoping that they can meet and we share things that uh, are burning as far as education is concerned. And in 2020, this was our most attractive conference, um, which called the attention, which directly addressed um, uh, teacher educators. If you look at the conference, we have bottom-up approaches to practice policy and teacher training in English language and literature teaching. This took place in November 2020. And I would not want to continue sharing the things that we have been done because I believe we have time for question and answer. You find the teachers who have developed ideas, making presentation, sorry, the teachers have developed expertise, making presentation. This is a teacher sharing teacher research projects which they've conducted in their classroom. Now, I want to briefly comment on this slide. The activities which Carmeta Research Group has been, have, have been doing, we sat down to reflect on these activities and discovered that we were using, though we're operating organically, we had activities that could be categorized as awareness and reflection. For example, identifying and reflecting on classroom challenges, planning lessons to address the challenges, sharing success stories from classroom, reading and analyzing articles, conferencing and dialogue. And there were activities that engaged the community like training and workshop, teacher mobility, dialogues with ENS, founded at the College of Education, and a virtual service pilot. This is a project with Peace Corps. This is a project in which we blend pre-service teachers and experienced practitioners to um, gain more training and share uh, ideas and receive mutual support on a horizontal basis. And then we also engage other teacher associations in our teacher research projects. Now we have a teacher from Mali and others from GR Congo. And what we have done in, with this expertise is to generate knowledge that we are now disseminating. We can look at the publications, the Kembe 2016, which, which we reflected on the Kameta data, um, Ekemba, Ekemba and Fonjong 2018. These are offspring of the work that we have been doing. And in one of the ways through which we uh, share the knowledge that we have acquired in our expertise, Sheila Fonjo here did a demo lesson in uh, the College of Education and they shared ideas with pre-service teachers. And we have, we have also had te teacher research reports. And right now, Carmeta Research Group is launching a series of teacher research webinars. Um, over 16 teachers who have completed their teacher research projects are sharing webinars fortnightly and they're accessible to the uh, to a general audience. And now we have also won the Hornby Award for a decentering. We are creating locally relevant um, uh, worksheets. If you see up here, one of the problems which we identified in our group was lack of course book in our classroom. And we realized that we couldn't buy course book for all the learners. So one of the things we could do to sort that is to create locally relevant worksheets, which can be accessible to learners and teachers. 
Now, practitioner expertise, how can this be handled? Between, uh, how can this expertise be exploited by teacher education? They can create opportunity for having in information about classroom experiences. What I mean by this is that the classroom now, at this point in time, teacher educators are very are not very aware of what occurs in the classroom at any given point in time. And so if they create opportunities for this um, convergence, then they will have practical experience about the real-time classroom, which can be which can orientate training. Now they can equally invite practitioners to do demo lessons like we did and create platform for debriefing. This will uh, help them um, review their training packages. They can build communities between pre-survey teachers and practitioners. And in this communities, ideas that are exchanged will help um, place the pre-service teachers with the orientation about real-time classrooms. They can create seminars during which practitioners share success stories while pre-service teachers share reflections on micro-teaching. And this is something which I have experimented in my own classroom and it's working in my pre-service, with my pre-service teachers. And it's working and uh, in ways that are at the margin. And I learned this from our activities in the Carmelta Research Group. And uh, some of the content generated by practitioners can be used for case studies in pre-service um, uh, training. Now, what is the outcome of this interaction that we've had? I mean, we, the Carmelta Research Group and the uh, College of Education. We realize that relevant expertise is constructed through agency in teacher association, and this can be of great value to teacher educators. What we're saying is that uh, teacher associations can develop a systematic way of, ways, systematic ways of, um, of building expertise, of developing expertise, which can be relevant to uh, teacher education. The teacher education, teacher association partnership is built on the value of expertise. It is out of this, from this expertise that will convince both parties that partnership is beneficial. So what I mean here is that um, if the, the expertise that is developed in teacher association is shared and recognized, it gives, it brings down the teacher educators from their, from their power position and they'll see the need to liaise with teacher association and use practitioners in, 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 in their training. Now, it is the credibility of a practitioner that challenges the power position of teacher educators. The teacher educators are never going to come down from their position. But what is going to bring them down is the expertise that is developed in teacher association. Because when knowledge shared is relevant, it's difficult for someone in power position to say, no, this is not necessary. And it is that need, that necessary, that um, pushes the teacher educators to come down uh, from their position. Now, in, in a case where this relationship is experimented, it's possible that um, the two structures can build on initial success. Initial success is to build long lasting partnerships and possibly develop a framework on which they can um, um, work together. Um, please, uh, I want to stop here. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity, Mark, to share my experience in Carmeta Research Group. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Eric. I mean, you know, the way in which you've been trying to break down the barriers between the, well, teachers and teacher educators, but also bring people together through the conferences where people from not just the teachers, teacher educators, but novice teachers and ministry people are also present is, is, is really interesting. I wonder how you'd, uh, how do you feel this represented an attempt at decentering? What's, okay. What's centering okay. Yeah, I, I want to start this. I want to start, say that the idea, the way knowledge is constructed in our context is so hierarchical in a way that um, in teacher education or in teacher education institution, the tendency has been for the knowledge inherited from probably or gained from Western concepts and poured down in 
transmission pedagogy to the trainees who go to the field, they hope that the knowledge will fit square boxes. Now, this top bottom is what has created a divide between theory and practice. Now, what happens is that in the teacher association, the teachers we're working with, when they build local expertise, and they start generating pedagogy that is relevant and responsible. I'll use the word responsible. Pedagogy that is relevant and responsible. Now, it informs the trainer up there. So to me, this is in itself dissenting the, the, the approaches that are used in, not only the approaches that are used in training, but the practice itself. Right. And I, I, would, yeah. I would like I'd like to share an experience. This is what we this is what obtains in Camelta, but I think I, I just read of an approach, a dissenting that's a dissenting experience that started in the 70s elsewhere in 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 uh, Colombia and won won the World Bank attention and, 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 and was and was referred to as a quiet revolution in education. And I think this is exactly what we're doing here. Because in our context, you can't challenge the status quo. Who are you to tell your teacher trainer that what he's telling you isn't going to work in your classroom? He would label you as dull. So when you go to the classroom and it's not working, now you dissent and you break the barriers and you do what works. And you can then come up and say, no, this is what is more realistic and responsible. Right. I mean, other than yourself, who is obviously committed to this, within the teacher education college, are your, has it affected your colleagues, do you feel? Definitely. And the first thing I want to say is that um, in our context here, it's difficult for practitioners to just sit and invite the uh, trainers who arrive up there to come to the conference. After all, the conferences are meant for the people right down there. And so what is it that has caused the trainers to be interested? I didn't show pictures of trainers from different colleges of education, heads of department who come to our conference. It's difficult for, for me to say, what has invited, what has brought them, what brings them down to the practitioner conferences and experiences is something is born out of some framework. No, I think it's because the record is of the recognition of the activities of the things that the teachers are able to produce, the kind of knowledge that they're able to generate that attracts the trainer. And I'm, I, I'm, I think I've had an experience in which in our, con in our conference, a novice teacher tells the trainer directly that the training packages you have are obsolete. We would like you to focus more on what is realistic on the field and stop giving us strict measures and theories. So I think this is, these dialogues have affected my colleagues in so many ways that they now find the need to be part of our event. And, and not just being part, but active agents in the things that we're doing. And I'm very sure that most of the ways they're doing things are being transferred into the training institution. I'll take, for example, knowledge about the competence competency-based approach in Cameroon landed first to the practitioners. Practitioners have access to that knowledge first. Now the trainers are only being informed that this is what we want you to do in your college of education. Train practitioners based, train the pre-service teachers based on the competency-based approach. And if you look at the whole idea of agile education, you, you, we can place a big question. Are these teacher educators able to master the competency based approach in ways that they can hand it over to our pre-service teacher? This is the big question. And this is what, but right now, when they come to our conferences, this is where they gain the knowledge to take back to pre-service education. And sometimes the practical resources which are created by the pre-service teachers, they have openly confessed in our conference that they are learning a lot from the practitioners. One fantastic. I mean, look at just finally, just looking ahead. Uh, where do you where do you see this uh, collaboration between practitioners and teacher educators going? One of the things that I know is that um, there's two institutions that have been so structured, hierarchical and formalized. It's it's a bit difficult to break the barrier directly and say now we are useful come and take what we're doing and start using it. So one of the approaches we're using, using is continue, continuously building this dialogue space, building the dialogue spaces. And at a certain point, we table a framework of understanding, a memorandum of understanding. I say, look, we can now use this. Already, I am already, I'm already making good use of the knowledge practitioners are, are, are generating in my, uh, with my pre-service teachers. 
For example, I send my pre-service teachers to go observe lessons taught by practitioners um, and then come back, share the lessons in the classroom. And we reflect on both the constraints of the context and how the those con uh, context constraints were managed in those lessons. I think this is one way through which we can um, um, break this barrier. And I think the, the question you ask, Martin, is pertinent because when you look at the way um, teacher education in the global south, particularly in Cameroon, is structured, it's so hierarchical in a way that to, for, for the trainers to absorb the knowledge of the training. Even if you go through policy, you are not very sure that's go down. So one of the ways we are doing it through these organic measures, we invite them to our conferences and we make sure the conferences take place in their camp, on their campuses. And we share this knowledge over and over, build more community of practice in which this knowledge is shared. Gradually, we see at a certain point that this can be formalized. Right now, we are working together with the College of Education down there to organize a, key, uh, a conference in May. And this conference is based on ways of developing this partnership. As I think this is one of the ways through which we want to formalize this relationship. Thank you very much, Eric. I mean, we could talk on for at least another hour as far as I'm concerned, but I'm afraid it's time to time for the break. Thank you very much for that very interesting and inspiring, inspiring presentation. Thank you so very much, Martin, for giving me this opportunity to share what Carmeta Research Group is doing. And we invite our audience here to follow Carmeta Research Group on our Facebook page and see the things that we are creating. We are creating a lot of um, knowledge content and disseminating it in view of changing our local spaces. Thank you so much. Thank you.